All right, welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. My name is Kurt. Uh, in today's video, we're going to look at a new drawing app or a new painting app. It's called Realistic Paint Studio. It's uh, made by the same people that make Paintstorm Studio, if you're familiar with that at all. Uh, I learned about Paintstorm from Boro Dante. It's another YouTube channel that uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of myself. And uh, I'm on their mailing list. And so they notified me last week about this new app called Realistic. It really, really impresses me. Uh, there, there's some things in here that I haven't seen in other apps. It has probably the best brush engine that I've ever seen. There's a catch though, we'll get to that. So let's just uh, jump right into this. So this is what you're gonna see when you first open up the app. This is the main home screen, the main gallery, I guess, whatever you wanna call it. And I actually, before we get into some of the sample artwork that they have here, I want to get right into the tutorials because these are some of the most impressive tutorials that I've seen in any app, I think, much less a drawing app. But I'm going to go into the tutorials here. And the way these work, and I'm, I'm just going to click on, uh, we'll click on this one, the, the mountain here. It does something really cool. All right. On the left side of the screen, it shows you the thing you're about to do in the tutorial. In the right side of the screen, it pre-selects the tools for every step of the process, the tools and the color. So for example, this is basically step zero. If I click this little step down here at the bottom right, we get this little line that appears. And if I start drawing on this side, trying to you know duplicate that, I basically have the exact same tool with the exact same color. Mine uh, isn't probably going to be as pretty, but I click next and uh, we've got some other lines going across here. And I'm doing this kind of quickly because the point is not really for me to make a pretty piece of art. I just want to show you this app. Click next. We got a new uh, brush tool here that I can uh, you can change the size over here on the left. But you can see that it's it's changing the brush. It's changing the color. It's changing all the settings that I need to make each step of this tutorial. Uh, switching to a smudge tool. I can pull all this out of the way. Again, mine's not as pretty. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Click next. We got a different color. Again, I'm just kind of showing you guys uh, a couple of examples. Again, using those smudge tools. Super, super impressive tutorials, right? Uh, they have several tutorials built in. Uh, this was just the first one I clicked on. There's, I don't know, there's probably, how many are there? One, two, three, four. So seven different tutorials. And some of them, they got the fruit, we've got landscapes, we've got multicolored giraffes, we have pencil sketches. And you never have to wonder what tool you're on because it's going to show up over here on the right side. Uh, you can click that, it'll open up the kind of toolbox here. And you can see there's a lot of different pencils here. There's some uh, Copic style markers, there's blending stumps, there's erasers. The thing that's most impressive to me about this though, for example, if I click on this pencil, you'll get a little sample over here on the left side that is showing what that pencil is basically capable of. And if you click the little play symbol down here on the bottom left, it will actually run through a little live demo using the particular brush or tool that you've clicked on. This is very cool because it gives me uh, confidence as an artist if I can see someone else using this same tool and seeing how they're using it then that tells me exactly how that tool is going to work and what it's going to look like on the canvas. So like if I click on this one, which is basically like a Copic marker uh, styled uh, marker here, you can see as we look at that little demo over there, we're seeing what that marker would look like if we actually use it on the page. Again, really impressed with that. Um, and the other thing is on this screen, you can choose a marker and actually live color on that little section over there. So if you do um, want to see how it does yourself, I'm just ruining this piece of artwork here. But uh, you can always click the play button. That'll reset it basically back to the factory default that it comes with. So I'm just going to grab this blending stump here for a second just to give you an idea what this looks like. Um, now this drawing was already in the app. I didn't make it, but I I'm really, really impressed with how the physics of the tools work. You know, the direction that you pull is the direction that you're going to get. And it just acts like I would expect it to act. Um, it, it's not doing anything out of the ordinary. It feels very much like the traditional tools do. So that's one thing that just really impressed me was how well the physics behind the things like the oil and paint and smudging and all that stuff actually works. It feels really, really good. It's arguably a better brush engine than Procreate, I think. 
There are some limitations. Again, I'll get to that in a second. But as far as just feel and, and how this app feels, it feels pretty amazing. Uh, let's close this and open up a, a new canvas. So when you click on create new, you're gonna get this screen here and there's three options. Uh, these are the only options you have to start an actual drawing. And that is uh, to have uh, a drawing that's on paper, a watercolor or an oil painting. And uh, I'm gonna start with the oil painting one here. So when you click on uh, the oil painting option, it's gonna bring up this list of canvases. Now there aren't uh, custom canvases. What you have here is what you get for right now. I'm sure that might change in the future, but uh, I'm gonna click on one of these and then click okay. And it's gonna open up in the, in the drawing here. It does use keyboard shortcuts, which you can customize. They're under the settings here, under the little keyboard picture, and that's very helpful. There are several little preset color palettes that you can choose from. Of course, you can pick your own color at any time. So let's actually do a quick rundown on the, the UI here. So uh, across the top, you've got all of these toggles, which will hide or show, you know, whatever you want to show on the screen. So, uh, for example, we have the color picker over here. Uh, you can actually adjust the size of this, which I thought was good. Uh, we can just leave that about right there. Uh, there is a layer window and you've got all your layers over here. I haven't played with all these options yet, but uh, you can have layers, you can have folders, you can preserve the opacity like an alpha lock. Uh, you can duplicate, merge layers, you can add a reference layer. Now, don't get too excited when you see reference layer in this case doesn't mean reference layers like you're used to seeing in Clip Studio or Procreate. This is literally just a reference layer with a photo that you can bring an image in, use that as a reference, uh, but this is not reference in the way that, say, Clip Studio does reference uh, layers. We've got our, our brush toggle over here. We've got our palette toggle. And again, there are different types of palettes here, uh, depending on what you want to go for. If you want to go for like a more traditional style palette, you can actually do that if you want to mix your own colors. So, for example, if I pick a, a bright yellow and then pick like a cyan, let's say, and as I uh, ease up on the pressure, it's going to start blending these. And then I can go in and grab those colors and end up with, you know, different colors than I have in my options to begin with. And it will pick up more than one color on one stroke. So like this brush, if I pick right here, it's actually including all the colors that are in that stroke, you know? So, and I can always just pick one of those colors then and you know, create my own, but the color mixing in it feels pretty good. And so if I want some more blue in this, I can just lightly touch that, mix that in. It's very, very fast in how it mixes colors and how the, the brushes work on the canvas. It's very, very smooth. Let's try a different brush. Maybe we pick a uh, yellow and some red. You can see how we can make orange here. And the tools change depending on what type of canvas you're on. So with this being a painting canvas, we actually have a different set of tools. You've got big brushes, you've got palette knives, uh, you've got some detail brushes, other types of brushes. I don't do enough traditional painting to even know what all these brushes are called. Here's that set of uh, what are basically Copic equivalent type markers, I believe. And these also work the same way. So with high pressure, and I'm not even really pressing that high, but with high pressure, you get a nice solid line. But as you lightly press, you can see that it's blending that line now into the rest of the canvas. And the blending is very, very smooth, as you can see here. I'm not really introducing a whole lot of new paint. It's just pulling together what's there. And if I do want to take another color and mix in here, we can just grab that. And again, let that blend together. And then we can pick from the middle color and get something completely different. Now, before we get into all the cool frames and backgrounds that are included with this app, I have to pay some bills. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. When I first started trying to learn more about digital coloring myself, one of the early tutorials I found useful was from an artist named Patrick Brown. He does amazing work, very dynamic, lots of great lighting and storytelling at work. 
You can see he's using a lot of the same principles we've discussed on this channel over the years. He has a class on Skillshare Premium, which I thought was a great course. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description can get Skillshare Premium for free for a limited time. After that, it's less than $10 a month when you purchase the annual subscription. Uh, it's an online learning community with tons of classes on all sorts of topics like illustration, graphic design, logos, music production, web development, you name it. If you're a curious person and you want to learn from professionals, members get access to thousands of classes with hands-on projects and a massive community of other learners. Check the link in the description for more details. All right, now the bills are paid. So I want to talk about these frames that are included because this might be one of the first apps built around social media art sharing because this... This is Instagram bait, okay? <laughs> the, uh, there are several different frames you can put your art on, and these aren't just, and they're not just, you know, slapping the art onto a background here. You're actually getting things like these shadows from these cups and things falling on this. You can see the shadows from these brushes. It really makes it look like you actually painted this on this little uh, notebook here. And there's a couple of options for each of the style canvases that they had. Um, this one works really well, all this blue with, with all the orange. Uh, I don't think you can customize the, the frames that are here just yet, but maybe that's coming in the future. But I thought these were really neat and, and, and a great way to present, you know, a drawing that looks traditional, you know, in a digital media form like this. But great for social media, I would say. So what's the catch? <laughs> I'm so, so impressed with this app. It's not trying to be Photoshop. It's not trying to be Procreate. There's not a million tools. You're limited to a couple of options. And I didn't get into all of them. There are cut and paste tools and transform tools and some of those things are built in. But the only problem that I have with it right now are the size of the canvases. And that's a pretty big problem. So let me show you guys what I did. I was playing around with that pencil tool. I put together some drawings that I, hopefully I'll finish one day. And I exported this to Photoshop just to see what size the image was, what the DPI was, because right now there are no ways to set any of that sort of stuff up in the app. I do believe it's coming, but it's not there now. So if we open up the image size in Photoshop, you can see that we have a width of 29 point whatever inches and 20 height, but the resolution is only 72. That's not a printable resolution, okay? That's, that's a pretty small size. And to show you how small that this would actually make a good print. If we change this to even 300, which I would say is an absolute minimum that you'd want to use on something you're going to print, you're limited to roughly nine by five inches, or if you're anywhere else in the rest of the world, 17.75 uh, by 12.67 centimeters. Um, that's not very big. Okay. We're talking about a pretty small print. So this is too small to export and, you know, for me to use, like, say, on a comic book page or something that's going to be printed, uh, at least at a, at a decent size, even like a standard letter size, it would be, you would see some pixelation most likely, even at a letter size. That's kind of a big downer on this app right now. Like, I am more impressed with the brush engine than probably any brush engine I've used ever, I think. <laughs> like, Procreate had the title before, but yeah, the brushes feel better here than they do in Procreate. The way that it handles tilt and the way that it handles pressure, and I'll show you guys real quick. This is one sharp line. I'm just gonna start tilting my brush. You can see just how much difference there is there in going from the tilted, really wide edge of the thing all the way up to you know just the point of it. It's very, very impressive to me just how much variance you can get out of one brush and it really feels a lot more like the traditional tool does. The only thing that I miss here, and the only the only reason that Procreate still feels a little bit faster is because the iPad Pro is running at 120 frames a second, I think, whereas this is only 60. And that's a limitation of my monitor. I don't believe the app is gonna run it any faster than that. At least it wasn't in their marketing for it. But, but I haven't seen a whole lot of people talking about this app yet. So. If you're one of the developers of this app and you happen to watch this video, um, I would love to see some higher resolution canvases. Uh, that's It's kind of a deal breaker right now for me. Um, otherwise, I'd be using it. And just because the canvas sizes are small doesn't mean that it's completely worthless. Uh, you can still do sketches with this. You could always up-res the sketches later. Uh, you could also get a lot of painting done as kind of like a middle stage, I would say. But as far as like 
really detailed, high-resolution stuff, not something I would try on this because, again, by the, by the time you try to blow it up into something usable, you're going to lose a lot of that detail. And so I can definitely see this, though, for an early to mid part of like a painting, and I'll probably be trying that myself. But it's a very, very impressive app. For a first version, uh, I'm not going to beat them up over, over the very first version, but um, I can tell that this app seems to be made for people that are maybe new to digital art or they're coming from a traditional background into digital and be able to share what you're doing very easily to social media and have some things that look cool, totally possible. So in its current stage, I don't know, I'm going to give this like 7 out of 10. <laughs> but, but if the canvas sizes were adjustable or I could get higher resolution, this is a, you know, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 app at this point for me because it's so much fun to use and it feels good to use. It's available on Windows, it's available on Mac, and I think iPads too. Uh, I just like the app. I'd like to see some more people try it so that the developers can get more feedback and uh, looking forward to the next update. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, check the links in the description. Subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.